I think we've found is this differential in life. And it's a much bigger piece. Let's take Joseph from the Bible. Let's take Jim Thorpe because it's the story. But really, we're talking about whether you become a victim. And my friend Joel Osteen would say, or a victor. And victimhood stinks. And when people claim victim, in other words, I did something or somebody did something to me, society did something to me, mm -hmm. and I just can't get it, you know, it, it oftentimes goes completely tone deaf to me. I feel like we're in a society that, that, that needs to uh, deal with that. Well, that's why the story is called a very high bar. It's really not about the high bar over which Jim Thorpe leapt. It's, it's the bar he set for himself wow. in terms of what's acceptable and what's excellent. Nobody tackles with Tohawk. That's a direct quote. I didn't make that one up. That's not the way I heard it. That's what he said. That doesn't mean he didn't get tackled. And just because he was tackled doesn't mean he was wrong. It just means that he had the presence of mind to say that. Can you imagine saying that? You've never played football, and you look at the greatest football coach square in the face and said, nobody tackles me, because I put the bar here, and it doesn't matter if I get tackled. It's where he put the bar, right? And so that, again, that's a thing we can control. Nobody's going to tell me I'm a victim simply because I stuttered for the first 14 years of my life. That, that didn't make me a victim. That that made me a guy that had something to overcome. That made me better, I think. Hmm. So we need a higher bar in our society. I think you're right. Because right now we're in this tendency of lowering the bar in order to offend fewer and to include more. So we're doing... We're doing a foolish thing for a good reason, but it doesn't mean it's not a foolish thing. No good thing ever came from lowering your standards. No good thing ever came from censoring speech. Doesn't mean there's not a world full of ignorant, hateful speech, but to make that go away is to lower the bar. Wow. So we need to raise the bar in virtually every area of discourse today. In my humble view, I, I'm tired of the protesting. I'm, I'm, I'm tired. Athletes have an opportunity that most of us will never have to bring us together with the gifts they have. Now, yes, it's their right to take that podium, to take that platform and use it for whatever they want. But it's our right to look at that and say, what are you doing? Get back in your lane. Mm -hmm. That's why I say to you a lot, I try and stay in my lane. I don't, I don't want to venture too far afield. I think I have a certain amount of permission to say a certain amount of things. And I overstep here with you sometimes because I know you're a friend of the court. But in the end, that story exists in the form it exists because I'm scared to death of giving a lecture. But I also want to say, in my own way, that we ought to raise the bar. Jim Thorpe did. And even though it took 90 years for some measure of justice to catch up to him, even though it took nearly a century for him to be on a box of Wheaties, where he should have been from the jump, it worked out. Raise the bar and be patient. A moment ago, you said you don't like to make this personal, but unfortunately, I, you know. It's your job. Yeah, yeah okay, I got personal. It. So take me to a time when you could have easily sunk into victimhood. A young man, unable to communicate the way you wanted to. Did you ever find yourself scratch into the top of that hole? Yes. I remember the stammer that afflicted me. It was not a full-on stutter. It was not a porky pig, you know, but even that's all, folks. But it was a... It was a physiological, it wasn't a physiological thing. It was a, it was a product of shyness. And for whatever reason, I had terrible trouble with teas. And I remember in the, uh, 
gosh, it must have been the sixth or seventh grade. The teacher asked, it was a, we were in a geography class, and they asked, what was the capital of Kansas? And um, I immediately raised my hand because I knew it was Topeka. But what came out was, ta, ta, ta. And I just felt the blood rushing to my face. Everybody was looking at me and listening to me, and I couldn't get it out. So what I did, to my shame, <laughs> was rather than stick with it until I got it out, I just said, Selena. A town in Kansas. No, it's not the capital. But I was more comfortable being wrong than I was sitting there being ridiculed. Hmm. Right? And that's when I thought, nah, this is no way to go through life, you know. And later in high school, I ran into a teacher, a mentor, who changed my life, who cured my stutter. But at that moment, to answer your question, yeah, I, I thought... I could go home feeling really, really sorry for myself right now because I can't say Topeka. And to be honest with you, I did. But I was also a kid. And way leads on the way and, you know, other experiences and other adventures helped me a lot. Two lines cut by a transversal so that alternate interior angles are congruent, the lines are parallel. Hmm. That comes from a moment when I was called on in geometry, didn't know the answer, brought forward. Basically, now you feel like you're standing in your underwear in front of the class at the chalkboard. And I legitimately never really studied. I wasn't a good student. My parents didn't put a lot of emphasis on school. Well, I want you to work, you know, finish your schooling, hurry up, get school done, get high school out of the way so we can put you to work, get you behind a camera, pulling cables and all that kind of stuff. And so my life is more about a trade mm -hmm. than anything. There are moments in our lives where you have these childhood memories of, you know, the focus on, and I can basically recall most of geometry, as I've proved to you texting, because of a moment at a chalkboard that was a very defining moment that I did never want to experience again, yeah. you know? And so there are these victim kind of moments in your life where you could cry and run out of a classroom and, and quit school, or you do something to, to dig yourself out of something that was uncomfortable.